Here we go with uh, elimination reactions and alcohols. So, preparation of alcohols. How do we uh, ultimately make these? Alcohols are generally synthesized, if not done through fermentation, by the addition of water to an alkene uh, hydrocarbon. Okay, so we see something um, that we've uh, talked about before. Okay, we had uh, hydrogenation, we had halogenation, we had hydrohalogenation. Here is a, another addition reaction for alcohols in which now we are adding water. Okay, you could call this a hydration uh, reaction if you wish, but uh, we would just simplify this to addition reaction. When we do this, we do require an acid catalyst, so be mindful of that. This is one of the ways that you'll identify that you are dealing with alcohol addition or hydration reactions. That you have an unsaturated hydrocarbon, a necessary requirement for all addition reactions. In this case, I am adding water, and so what ends up happening is water cleaves into an OH group, which will go on one side of the double bond. The remaining hydrogen will go on the other side. So obviously isomers uh, can exist if you have longer chain alcohols, because we can't really predict where the OH will go very similar to what we had with the hydro, uh, hydrogen halides in which we didn't know which side of the double bond the halogen was going to go on. So be mindful that isomers can exist there for these ones. It's also a good time to talk about elimination reactions. Now elimination reactions are one where now we see something being removed from our particular hydrocarbon. So the names of the reactions actually kind of make sense. Addition, you're adding atoms into an unsaturated hydrocarbon, so you have space to do so. Substitution, very much like soccer or hockey or something like that. You can't put a new player on until you take some player off. So substitution reactions have to remove and add. We see this with saturated hydrocarbons as a reaction. In elimination reactions, what we are going to do is remove atoms from the molecule and we will form an unsaturated product. Okay, so all of the names do make sense. Now there are three types of elimination reactions that you should be familiar with. And we see some names that we haven't seen since uh, chapter 9. Ethane cracking. Okay, to crack something or to break something makes it sound like you're making it smaller. Ethane cracking is only doing this ever so slightly, but it is fundamental. Um, if we were getting into polymers in 10.5, we would see where this one kind of shows its teeth. But, ethane cracking, sometimes referred to as cracking, is an elimination or dehydrogenation reaction. Notice, you're starting with a saturated hydrocarbon, a fairly small one in ethane. Okay, under the correct set of conditions, what I can do is remove hydrogen from it, eliminate hydrogen from the original molecule, and the carbons have no choice but to form a double bond to satisfy their octets. And so you can see the unsaturated project, pr product sorry, with the elements that have been removed. Why are we talking about uh, elimination reactions here? Because, well, I can do this with alcohols as well. Elimination reactions involving an alcohol are called dehydration. Okay, and in this case you will be eliminating the hydroxyl group, usually with the presence of catalysts, and the neighboring next door hydrogen. So to do this, what we, end up, uh, what we have here is a saturated hydrocarbon, but in this case you are saturated with an additional hydroxyl group, and we are going to eliminate that, creating an alkene in its place, and the elements of hydroxyl and hydrogen form water as the product. So you can kind of notice some unique things as you look down the page for identifiers for these particular reactions. We also talked about organic halides in the last chapter and so we can eliminate these halogens from our uh, hydrocarbons in what would be a dehydrohalogenation reaction. Okay, so I'm going to remove the elements of water and the halogen. So notice you're going to have a lot of products on the right hand side. This will make it easier to identify. And so here you have your organic halide, there's your halogen. In this case, I'm going to react it with a strong base. That is important here. And you can see you will now have elements that can be used to make water. 
as I pull off the halogen, it exists on its own. The hydrogen next door must also come off to create the double bond. And if I have a hydrogen and hydroxide ion hanging out, well, it's pretty easy to make water. Okay, so there's your three examples of elimination reactions in which we are removing stuff from saturated hydrocarbons. They're slightly different in each one. Ethane cracking is usually just done with heat. Okay, alcohols will require catalysts. And from organic, organic halides, we now require a strong base to facilitate the reaction. Okay, we can do a couple of these... Uh, Examples here. Write the structural formula equation and represent the reaction of 2-bromopropane with a strong base. Okay, so 2-bromopropane, if we quickly write that one out. There's my three carbons. And I have a bromine at carbon 2. I'll put in my little hydrogens here for the structural diagram. And we can see that we have a fully saturated hydrocarbon here, or a alkylated um, hydrocarbon with bromine, but you can see the elements of propane when it was already there. And I'm going to react it with hydroxide ion. Okay, so reactions that start with um, our <coughs> pardon me, with our saturated backbone here is going to be for an elimination reaction. And so, what we have to do is eliminate the halogen here. And so, that will facilitate a double bond to be created. So, the bromine will go. And so, we'll leave the remaining hydrogens that we had. And you can kind of see we lost the ones up here. At least, that's how I'm drawing it. So where does the bromine go? It hangs out by itself in its ionic form. And where does this hydrogen that was lost go? It goes with the hydroxide ions that we have there to form water. Okay, this is an elimination reaction involving an alkyl halide with the reaction of a strong base. Another one that we can look at here is butane 2 all reacts in the presence of a phosphoric acid catalyst. Okay, so we have that. <clears throat> and we want to draw the structural diagram of all the reactants and products. So in this case, we have an alcohol as one of our reactants. If we take a look at that, there's one, two, three, four. It's butane 2 all, so I'll put my hydroxyl group there, and then I'll use dashes to represent all of the other hydrogens in what was originally a butane molecule. It's going to react with a phosphoric acid catalyst, so there's your H3PO4 catalyst. Okay, catalysts don't participate in the reaction, so it's a uh, common practice to draw them with your quantitative arrow to show that they were there but not participating in the reaction. And so if we do this, remember this is still an elimination reaction, and so we're going to draw what products that we can get here, and so I have to remove that particular hydroxide that was on carbon 3, and so if I do that, I'm going to take this neighboring hydrogen with it. Here's the remaining hydrogens that I still have in the molecule, but I've lost those two guys up top. Okay, where do they go? Well, the hydroxide has been removed, so is one of the neighboring hydrogens. Sorry, the hydroxyl has been removed and the hydrogen has been removed, and so those would form water as they're hanging out uh, on their own. Okay, now what have we created in its wake here? Okay, we have an alkene with four carbons. So this is but with, on the left, at carbon 2, on the right, at carbon 2. This is but 2 ene. Now I could have also removed the hydroxyl and the neighboring hydrogen from this side. So isomers are possible. I could and probably would create also a small sampling of these guys right here. Okay, 
Okay, and I also make a small amount of butte, one e. Okay, so be mindful. Oops, be mindful of questions in which I'm asking for all isomers that could be created. So look for the possibilities. This happened before earlier with the hydrogen halides. It's happening again now with our alcohols. All right, if I'm pulling one thing off and there's a neighboring hydrogen, okay, there's lots of different possibilities that could happen. I do can I can control this a little bit depending upon the conditions that I run the reaction in, but if isomers are possible, most questions will just ask for one acceptable isomer. I could challenge you guys and ask for all isomers, and so you would give me all the structures and names of the ones that can be produced in the reaction. Hope that makes sense to you. All right, you can see some more information on it on pages 431 to 435. Try some more of the sample questions, and again, pay particular attention to the reactions as well as the nomenclature. Okay, there you go, guys. That is 10.3.